This video is presented by Simply Safe, and more on that later. So a couple weeks ago, I built this eating table. And oftentimes what happens when you're building a table with four legs is it'll tend to wobble a little bit. So while I was fixing the wobble problem, it got me thinking if I could try out a new technique to do it using epoxy. And I didn't really want to do it on that table. I wanted to experiment with it a little bit more. So that's what we're going to do today. On this little piece right here. So the basic idea is if one of the legs isn't touching the ground, could I just put a little cup under it, pour some epoxy in that, let it harden, and then take it out and kind of clean it up and it would be balanced. So first we're gonna build this little guy, then we're gonna test out that sort of practical approach, and then we're gonna do something a little more sensational where we're gonna to try to make it look like it's levitating. All right, make sure that you're subscribed and uh, let's get to it. All right, so as I said there at the top of the video, this project's gonna be a lot about experimentation. And so for that reason, I didn't feel like there were a lot of stakes on the design, and I kind of wanted to use it to play around with some new ideas and some new techniques. And obviously the main one is gonna be this kind of balancing and then floating idea with the epoxy. But before we do any of that, I have to build an actual piece. So here I've got myself a little template printed out and I'm just kind of marking it on some red oak that I had laying around the shop. And then I could take it over to my Craig ACS where I split the pieces in half since I had marked the template twice on each of the little chunks that I had. So here it's kind of hard to see, but I've extended the line of what's going to be the joint face on the piece all the way to the end of the board, and then I'm marking it down across the width. And the reason that I'm doing that is so that I can put it back on the ACS and line the track up with the joint face and just cut myself a nice edge that'll be where the pieces are going to glue to one another. Then to join these together, you could probably just use glue, especially since they're gonna be strong enough initially, and then by the time you get all the shelves in there, it's just gonna further tighten things up. But I decided to just cut in a couple dominoes, that said dowels or whatever you have would work plenty good. All right, so while the legs are drying up, I needed to start making my shelves, and I'm gonna need a total of four shelves, and each of them is gonna be about 14 inches wide, which means I need two boards glued together in order to make those, so I'm cutting out four times two, eight shelves. No, not eight shelves, eight pieces to make four shelves. And these boards were pretty rough. They had a lot of cracks in them. So here I'm pouring in some epoxy to help stabilize everything because I didn't have a lot of material laying around. So I kind of needed to use everything that I had on hand. And the reason that I'm putting black pigment in it is because ultimately we're gonna stain this whole thing black. So this way it'll kind of be camouflaged in there. But anyways, once that had hardened the next day, I could cut the pieces into some oversized chunks and then I jointed one edge on the joiner, obviously. Then took them over to the table saw where I could rip the opposite edge so that way I had a nice clean edge on both sides of the board. Always making sure to carelessly throw the off cuts behind me up in the air. And then I could glue up my eight pieces into the four shelves that I was gonna need. And they're all still plenty oversized at this point. And no need for dominoes, dowels, or anything else for these guys. Just lots of clamps. So at this point, my legs were dry and I could turn my attention back to those. And I kind of had a change of heart in direction of workflow. I'll let myself explain it on camera. So I was about to do it and I was just gonna go through my normal workflow that I always use. I've done 10 other times on this channel probably where I basically just like template route to this. And then I thought to myself, you know, I wanna see if I could do this on the CNC. I wanna just try something different. Granted, I made that decision a little late in an ideal world, I would have done it sooner where I would have had enough room for the joint face to be more like this. So I could basically just glue my pieces together. It would look something like this, except for it would have to go out 
longer, but oversized. And then I could template route the whole thing. Now I'm not gonna be able to do that because I'm already gone too far, but I think I could still make it work. So basically what I'll have to do is I'll have to very accurately set it up in a way where when the CNC cuts it, it does not cut this edge. So it'll, it'll essentially just be going and then it'll be going through nothing when it gets to this part. Not ideal, but I think I can still make it work. So here I am making it work. And like I kind of said with the graphic there, if you want to see how I normally go about this, you probably already have because I've done it in so many other videos, but I'll link a couple key ones where I, I use this workflow the more manual way in the description so you can go check those out. But anyway, after I had routed the shape out with a quarter inch bit, I swapped that out for a round nose bit. I'm not sure exactly what this is called, but it's basically a bit that's going to cut a three quarter inch, I think, half circle. So in my file, I set it up so that it would route four dados going across the inside face of each of the leg subassemblies. And then I headed over to the bandsaw to just clear out the extra material. And then I used my router table to put a really heavy round over along all of the edges because I want these pieces to come out really round. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm trying to kind of set up the hardest possible situation for doing this kind of floating technique. I figured if I did it on a really square leg, it's really easy to extend that shape into the epoxy. But in this case, I'm going to have a tapered splayed leg that's also cylindrical. So mimicking that shape is going to be really hard. And if I can do it on this, then I know I can do it on pretty much any shape. And normally my aesthetic is a lot more crisp and angular. I'm not big on rounding everything over, but on this piece, again, I wasn't really concerned with making it my most beautiful piece ever. It's definitely not that. And instead, I just wanted to play around with techniques. So I'm doing all this rounding over and I'm going to round over all the shelves, which is something that I've never done before, having rounded over shelves that are sticking into half circle dados instead of everything being squared off. So I don't know that I love it with this project, but it's definitely something that I can incorporate into a project that'll be nicer in the future. And speaking of those shelves, now that we're done with the legs, we can turn our attention back to those which are dry now. So here I'm over at the crosscut sled and I'm just making sure that one end is nice and clean. That way I can head over to the table saw and cut the other end to bring them down to their finished lengths. And then I can just rotate them 90 degrees and cut them to their finished widths as well. So now they're the size that they need to be. Well, almost the size they need to be. And that's just because, as I said, I'm kind of doing everything rounded with this project. So I put a, I think one and a half inch radius. I just made myself a little template and I traced that shape onto the corner of each of my shelves. And then I headed over to the bandsaw just to clear out the bulk of the material. And then I put the template back onto my shelf and used the template router to cut in a ledge on all four corners. And then once I completed the shape on one of them, I could use that as my new template, just putting it on the next piece and tracing that shape out. And once you have that ledge in, you don't need to have a template as a guide anymore. So then I would head over to the router table and take a really heavy cut to complete the shape. And then I could swap the bit out for a roundover bit and put that roundover along the top and bottom edge of the shelves. So after doing that and a little sanding on the edges of all the shelf pieces, I could finally start assembling everything. And this was definitely more challenging than a normal assembly. And I think that's because typically when I'm doing this, I have rectangular shelves that are going into squared off dados. And so there's a lot of friction in there. So you can kind of just like dry fit the pieces together and everything holds tight enough that you can get it clamped up. But here with everything being rounded over it, definitely doesn't have that friction to hold itself together. So you really are relying on the clamps until glue is dry. And you can see in this shot that initially I had some trouble. But eventually after a little thinking, I grabbed some of these woodpecker right angle clamps to use as basically an extra set of hands so that I could hold the leg piece propped up and that helped me put everything together. And at this point, I'm just doing a dry assembly. There's no glue. And that's because I'm still kind of trying to figure out exactly the way that I want to go about this. And so the way that I ultimately decided to do it was 
I started off by putting some glue in just the top shelf dado and then getting that assembled. And I definitely could have done this faster, but I actually just let that set up for a few hours so that it was holding itself together with no clamps on it anymore at this point. Here you can just see the top leg is really cantilevered, so that tells you it's a pretty strong joint. And then I went ahead and did the exact same thing to the bottom shelf. So at this point, after I get it all clamped up, just the top and the bottom shelf are gonna be glued in place. And one of the big challenges with this was that with all the rounded over edges and the way that everything comes together in a point at the top, it was really hard to tell that the shelves were in a line with each other and centered on the leg subassemblies. So rather than trying to glue everything in place and probably making a huge mess, when I was gluing up, I just did my best to get the top and the bottom in alignment. And then for the two middle shelves, I didn't put any glue in there and I just kind of slid them in so it's still just dry assembled here. But since the top and the bottom are glued together, it's enough to hold everything together. And then I could kind of eyeball them into position and clamp them up so that nothing could move. And then I just drilled and countersunk a few screws into the shelves that are in the middle. And then, like I said before, this whole thing's gonna be stained black in the end. I just got some more black epoxy and filled in the hole so that it was flush with the rest of the leg. So at this point, the piece is pretty much together. Obviously, it's still very rough, but we could start working on the kind of more experimental aspects of this build, which, again, were the main purpose is for building this piece in the first place. So you know that I've been working with and using Simply Safe for a really long time. And in fact, I've been working with them so long that I bet I could do this entire ad read without breaking eye contact with the camera. In fact, I won't even blink. All right, here we go. So Simply Safe makes home security systems that are easy to set up and intuitive to use and that make sure your home is safe. And they do this by covering your home comprehensively, both inside and out, thanks to products like their video doorbell, glass break sensors, and everything else that they offer. And right now they're having their best deal of the year with up to 40% off security systems. So here's how it works. After you design your system, it gets delivered right to your door and it's really easy to set up yourself. And from there, your home is being professionally monitored 24 seven. And if anything happens, they're always on team will call authorities immediately. And Simply Safe's interactive monitoring service begins at only 50 cents per day. We've had our system for over two years now, starting off with window and door sensors, glass break sensors, cameras and the basics, and have since expanded to include the video doorbell, and most recently, their new wireless outdoor security camera. And this thing is slick, super easy to install, has a huge 140 degree field of view, plus eight times zoom and a built-in spotlight with color night vision and two-way audio so you can communicate through it and keep an eye on everything around the clock. So if you've been thinking about getting a home security system, or even if you have a system that you think could be better, you owe it to yourself to give Simply Safe a look. There's no contracts and no hidden fees, and right now you can save 40% or more on your Simply Safe security system during their biggest sell of the year. Just visit simplysafe.com slash four eyes to learn more, put a system together, and see if it's right for you. All right, thanks Simply Safe. Now let's get back to the video. <sighs> this piece is still very uh, rough right now. Still needs a ton of sanding and cleanup. But the whole point of making it, or one of the big reasons to making it, was testing out this theory about the, the wobbly leg. And wouldn't you know, it doesn't really have a wobbly leg. So I think what we're gonna do is just cut a leg so that we have a wobbly leg. We'll be able to tell, actually, you know what we'll do is we'll mark the ground right here so that we know we put it in the same spot. This will be like our control area wobble. So let's go cut a leg and then uh, we'll take it from there. It, it hits the track before the leg can come out. Yeah, I could just cut it by hand. Here's what a real woodworker does. Hand tools so that he can purposefully cut a thing too short to try to make it look like it's floating just like the way that they did back in the old days. All the Amish, that's the devil's work. But I've got an idea for epoxy, Jebediah. Seems like a good one. All right, here we go. All right. That is nice and wobbly, huh? So I'm just gonna put some weight on this side and there's no better weight than a drill. 
So now we should be good. So now what I need to do is I'm just gonna put some of this tuck tape on the ground and then we just need to kind of dam it up. We're gonna have to wait a minute though while this heats up, so. Actually, this is a little big, but if it was really small, I'd put hot glue on the bottom, it'd probably be fine. Yeah. If you like formed it nicely, like so it was just like a patty of hot glue. Yeah, it'd be good. I ain't above a patty of hot glue. Never have been, never will be. That's not the way my mom raised me. Get under there. I don't know if I built the wall high enough. All right, well, this stuff should be hard by now, with any luck. Seems hard. Oh boy. Maybe like a little scraper. Yeah, a putty knife. David putty knife. You got epoxy stuck to the ground. You ask the eight ball. There we go. All right. No. All right, so now we gotta clean this. Stuff off, get rid of the glue first. How hard is it? How hard? Yeah. Very. Oh, you know what'd be good is um, if I have my little, I have a little multi-tool. It worked, look at that. We're back in our position and there's no wobbling. Yeah, so this worked. I mean, honestly, that, that was a big discrepancy between the ground and the leg. And uh, I feel like you wouldn't really notice it if you weren't looking for it. I guess this is a fine practical technique that somebody could potentially use, but we don't wanna be practical. We wanna be sensational. So I'll basically do something like this. I'm gonna cut these off, yeah. That's still only that much. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set her on here. That'll be enough, right, for the effect to be cool still. So we're just gonna set our little cups in here. You think I can pour it with them sitting there or should I like remove the table and then set it and then dip her in? <sighs> Am I gonna be able to pour out of here? I'll be able to do it, I think. How many pumps? I'm gonna say each one of these would be, for me to fill this up to there, oh, that's a lot of pumps still, man. I bet you that's five pumps, maybe more. That might be seven pumps. So I'm gonna go 28 pumps. Oh, 28 pumps. Da, 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 da. Green day. One. Set timer for four minutes. Okay, I think this is, Nicely mixed. The question is, are we gonna make it? We're not, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, it just needs to come up to the foot. Oh man, I just thought of a, something bad. I bet you it's gonna leak out of the cup. What? <laughs> Cause I'm filling these pretty deep. So it's gonna generate a lot of heat. Yeah. Remember how the other ones melted the cup? I probably should have done this in multiple pours. But eh, let's do it in one pour. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we can always redo it in multiple pours. I wouldn't say that my fears came true because if you expected something to happen, would that qualify as my fears came true? No. Just, it's kind of more of a just as expected. So, so it didn't, ex not exactly what I thought. I thought, I thought that the cup would just melt and it would go. Well, it's hovering. That's the good news. <laughs> it's, it's, oh yeah, it's being held up by those two little... All right, there's the finished piece. How does it look? So how would you do it? So you just pour once, not touching it? You'd pour a little bit, you know, you'd pour like an inch, yeah. then you'd let that harden, then you'd pour another inch. I, I'm gonna cut them off and restart. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut like right at the base, it's fine. So I'll just hack it off with this and then I'll just make clean cuts again on the, the same way that I made them the first time. Oh God. Is it the epoxy or the... <laughs> Let's see if there's a different way to do the other ones. 
Why? Why what? Oh, because you were just cutting epoxy the last time we were down here. Why was it like so much easier last time? Yeah, I was barely cutting through anything. Yeah. Um, you could like drill through a bunch of it. A little easier. Yeah, this is gonna be like a uh, an all day sort of thing. I don't have the stuff I need to do it right now, so I gotta wait. I'd have to go to the store to do that. I've been to the store before and I could do it again. They probably got some other good stuff at stores too that I could use. Still a little soft. This stuff's been sitting here for two days. One of those popsicles. Yeah. I should just leave it like this, it's cool. I can see this in a, in this like big white wall. Let's get a clean shot of the white wall and it'll look like it's a museum. It just needs like a little card on the wall right here that says 2021. What would we call this piece? Do you want like a pretentious name? Yeah. Or? Okay. Like that means nothing. Or like capitalism or something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it capitalism. Okay. Yeah, it's not a. No, it'll it'll be fine. I can just like sand that off. So I think a better way to do this would be to spend more time and not use a cup. Probably something where you like kind of like wrap it in that tape, maybe. Uh, but you couldn't do that because then we have to be upside down. I don't know. This whole thing is stupid, right? The practical version of it I've shown works. This one, obviously, if you're doing this, this is a very special circumstance. So it's like a it's like one off, off art piece. Yeah, but so I guess I'm gonna have to just get the uh, the multi tool again and just kind of hack away at it to to remove the bulk of it. I'm gonna I'll film that on my camera. There's probably no point in you sitting out here filming that the whole time. Yeah. Because it's gonna take a while. Take a bit, yeah. So it might catch on fire too. Hopefully. If any luck. If it does, then I'll run. If any out. luck we'll light this thing on fire. I'll yell for you if that happens. I'll just have the camera on the whole time. So I really thought that this was going to take forever, but it turned out to be not that bad. I just kind of used the multi-tool to hack away the bulk of the epoxy, and it probably only took about three minutes per foot to do this. And then after I had it roughly shaped, I just got some aggressive sandpaper and kind of worked my way around to refine the shape a little bit more and kind of create that cylindrical extension of the foot that the piece needed to have. And then once I was happy with the shape on each foot, I just went through the grits of sandpaper, working my way up to as high as I had, and then ultimately put some polish on to help get the epoxy as smooth as I could get it. And because I'm dumb, I actually forgot to film me staining this piece black. So in lieu of that, here's a shot of another piece that I built about a year ago that was also made out of red oak. So you can see what it looks like before staining it. And then here is me actually staining the red oak. And here's what it looked like after. So to help you visualize what it would have looked like on this piece, it would have gone from looking like this to looking something like that. And as further proof that I actually did it, here's the aftermath. Here's me cleaning up the spray gun in the bathroom. All right, so this one was definitely kind of a weirder project for me, but I still think there were some good takeaways. First off, the sort of practical approach for using this technique. I don't think it should be the go-to way for people to fix legs, but if you're in a pinch and it seems like a good fit for your problem, yeah, go for it. As for the kind of floating version, at the end of the day, even though it works, it's kind of a gimmick, I guess. You know, I would only do it for a kind of artsy piece. Probably the thing that I actually will take and use most often would be the rounded shelf in the rounded dado. That's something that I hadn't done before and while I don't necessarily love it on this project, I could see designing a piece that highlights that more and, and where it is kind of the standout of the design. So hopefully you enjoyed the build. Hopefully there's something that you can take away from it. 
If you're looking to build some of our pieces that are nicer than this one, I'll put a link to our plans in the description. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and if you're interested in finding out about how you can support the show and get a t-shirt, check out my Patreon. I'll have a link in the description to that as well. And we'll see you in the next one.